Good morning and welcome to Fibertown. Am I out of focus? Hey everybody, I'm Emily and this is episode 44 and it's December 4th, 2013 and a little girl just came to say hello. Hang on a second. Oh, there she is. Come on camera, there we go. We're nice and focused now. She wants to go back outside. What are you up to out there today? It's a nice day here in Fibertown. And yeah, we're on episode 44. Excellent. Um, so I am Chain of Fools on Ravelry, and I am Fibertown on Instagram. And hello, hello. Glad everyone is back this week. Thank you for coming back. If you are a regular, and if you are brand new, hi, how you doing? I want to say thank you to Karen Budnick for the iTunes review. She left me a wonderful iTunes review uh, this past week or two, and I want to say, say thank you. Very lovely. And let's do a rundown of what's going on today uh, in Fibertown. We're going to have the November FOs drawing, so somebody will win a pattern today. We'll do that ASAP. And I'm going to show you my FOs, two, my whips, a lot. We're going to talk about some spinning and some miscellaneous stuff and what is up and coming in Fibertown. Oh, Alice. So Alice, are you gonna hunt for squirrels today? Are you hunting squirrels out there? You better go and see. Okay. See you later, Al Bell. Say bye bye. Yeah. She's got a squirrel. The squirrel brain cell is is functioning. Okay. Let's do the drawing. November FOs. We had 181. So I've put two through 181 here. You all can see that. Let's press generate. Let's see if I can do. 170. Wow, that's a late one. Okay, so now talk amongst yourselves while I find out who that is. 170. And while we are uh, looking, um, I have a question for you guys regarding the monthly FO giveaways. If I can figure out how to do a poll on Ravelry, sorry, Alice is killing her toy. If I can figure out how to do a poll on Ravelry, I'm gonna, I'm toying with the idea of changing it up a bit. Um, the prize would be the same, but I kind of like to allow for chatter in the thread because people want to talk about everyone else's um, FOs. And it's kind of sad that they can't. So I kind of like to open it up for chatter and have it be a chatter thread, but that would mean that I would have to draw ahead of time. And um, you know, before the show. So if I drew, I if I landed on a chatter, or the random number generator landed on a chatter post, then I would have to draw again until I found an FO. So I'll see if I can figure out the poll thing and I'll put up a poll thread um, in the Fibertown Ravelry group, which if you haven't joined, please do because you can win stuff. Like S.E. Hepworth is our winner this month. And she made a handsome, handsome bow tie and a handsome, handsome dude. I think that's her husband. Yep, for her husband. That's really well done. Lovely. Okay, so S.E. Hepworth, who I believe is Sarah. Is that right? Yes, Sarah from the UK. So Sarah, contact me. And finally, I'm in focus. I don't know what my camera is doing today. Um, contact me. Tell me what you want, and I will gift it to you. Alrighty. Um... FOs. Ah. So I'm doing Christmas knitting. And I kind of thought I wouldn't, but now I'm like fully committed. So my first Christmas knitted object is a hat for my niece, who is four. And I made this one up. I cast on 70 stitches out of some hand spun, which was spun. It's a two ply hobbledehoy bat. And the name of the bat was Beat Patch. And it's no joke, one of the most beautiful bats I've ever seen. Perhaps the most beautiful. I still have a lot left. I'm not sure what's going to be done with it, but I love the turquoise in this part. Um, I have enough for another hat. So there's my niece's hat. And yes, she is into all things sparkly pink and purple. So I think she'll like it. So that will be for her for Christmas. And 
more purple stuff, my other purple FO. Um, I'm knitting this with a friend for another friend who is going through chemotherapy. Um, and it's called The Textured Pillow. And I got the book from the library. Or, or she owns the book, but the library has it. Textured Pillow, yeah, I was testing out an owl stamp on it. It doesn't come with the owl stamp. I think it's from Natural Knits for Moms and Babies. And I don't have a great picture of it, but basically you um, you knit four squares. Um, one person, well, I'm going to knit four squares, and my friend Leanne is going to knit four squares. Then we'll sew them together, and um, they'll be over a pillow form. So that will go to um, the friend and neighbor who is going through chemotherapy. And she loves purple, so what can I say? I have the first square done. Oh, it looks great on screen. I blocked it out last night to measurements, nine by nine. Um, it is a heart. It is out of Madeline Tosh Vintage in the Flashdance colorway, which was gifted to me by my friend Angie. Um, and a lot of the yarns I'm going to use in this pillow are gifted to me by Angie, who is a very generous knitter indeed. So she knows I love purple, so someone gave her this, and she gave me two skeins of it. So I knit, I knit it into a hat. This was what was left over. I may pull out the hat and use more because I hate the hat. It's the Lucy hat. It was from a knit scene. It looks, it just didn't come out right. So that's the first square. Um, another square is going to be out of some other purple leftovers. This is Tess Yarns Merino Worsted, I believe. And I knit a Liesel for my daughter out of this. I'm not making this super wash, but because I'm going to use this too. This is, um, what is this? I think this is Manos. Angie gave me this one as well. Um, and then, you know, maybe I'll do this. We'll see. This person is very knit worthy. Um, her mom is a knitter and just cranks out hat after hat after hat. Um, so yeah, those are my FOs, all purple. So I'm going to choose whatever I want for my side of the pillow and Leanne will choose whatever purples she wants. So I think there's a heart, a star, a plaid, a heart, star, a plaid, and then another one with maybe three hearts. So I'd like to get that done by the new year. We'll see. So works in progress. Okay, socks, my other committed Christmas knitting, if I can get it done. Um, I have a hoe. This is my husband's uh, Patton's Croy rag, blue rag stripe, which is so much fun to knit. I have to get the other one on the needles. I did this magic loop, it went really fast. Um, magic loop chow goo one and a half, US one and a half, 2.5 millimeter. And I believe it fits him. And yeah, got to do the other one. Um, the other sock I'm doing for my daughter is opal, and I have one done for her, and the other one barely cast on still. I haven't touched that. Um, but my other work in progress, my other sock pair, is almost done. These are for my, my son, and I'm doing these Magic Loop two at a time, although I just I had an issue with one of them at the toe, so I just yanked it off the needles. Um, this is almost ready to be Kitchenered. Isn't that cute? So the other one is at the same place, pretty much. But this one is ready to be kitchenered, and um, the other one needs a little bit of surgery. This is Lane Servinia, and in the forever base, and I don't, I think the colorway just has a number. So yeah, an Italian uh, yarn company. And these are my usual recipe. All of these Christmas socks are my usual top-down diamond bottom gusset I, I love these. And I have another skein. I have a lot left over, each ball, and then a third skein. So that'll probably get some more use at some point. Um, that'll be an FO next week for sure. So socks, socks, socks. And now, I this is crazy, but I've wanted to do this for a year. This is the Advent Scarf by Kristen, I want to say Benekin. She puts out a free Advent Scarf pattern, I think for the past three or four years. And I've seen this on, I think Retro Lemon did last year's Advent Scarf, and I loved her version. Um, and I want one. So, but what I decided to do was use last year's pattern. And just because I liked it so much. And this year's, I believe, calls for, well, 
what I needed to do is be able to fudge this pattern because I'm not using the recommended type of yarn. Um, so that's another reason I went for last year's because I knew I liked it and I knew that I had the whole pattern laid out and I could sort of um, fudge the amount of repeats I was going to do um, because it calls for lace weight yarn and I am using swans, oh my gosh, look at the red. That is not a tr the, <laughs> the color, the actual red of this yarn. Oh, wow. It's more of a subdued, this is showing up very orange. In real life, it's much more of a blue red. Uh, I don't remember the colorway name, but this is Swan's Island Fingering. It does not look like fingering. It's like a heavy lace weight. It reminds me of Volmeisa lace. So Swan's Island is organic merino from Maine. I'm not sure if it's from an actual island. I should research it. I bought this this summer when I was in Connecticut at Madison Wool, which is a wonderful shop. And in the hank, it is so soft, just lovely. When I wound it, it, it reads more as like a cottony kind of wool, a tightly plied cottony kind of wool like the Volmeisa lace. I think, I don't know if it's a two or a three ply. I think it's a two ply. Uh, maybe not. At any rate, it's about 580 yards, and the scarf pattern is calling for like a thousand yards of lace weight. I don't know if it uses all of that. It doesn't look to me like it does, but I'm kind of measuring as I go. And of course, since this is heavier than a or true lace weight, it's bigger. So this is what I have so far. I finished through day three with modifications. And I love the way it feels. So it's, it's squishy in the hank, cottony and like ropey in the ball or the cake. And then when you knit it, it's so squishy again. And I'm really loving working with this yarn. So the first day, you're supposed to do three repeats. That's the first day right there. I did two. There's day two. I did the full thing. And there is day three. And I only did half of day three's um, chart. And I think it's gonna be fine. I'll just do, there's a spacer section between it, like a garter spacer section with some yarn overs in the middle between each day. So I'm just gonna do, I'm just kind of making it up as I go along and hoping for the best. I am playing yarn chicken on a grand scale. I think I'll be okay. Um, I just hope I won't regret not doing enough. You know, if I get to the end and there's a ton left over, I guess I could always, you know, throw in something extra. It's the beauty of it. So I'm trying to do that every day, and it's I need to I need to do my hats though and my socks. But this is fun. This is very fun, and it's going to be quite a stole, I think. Alrighty, so those are my works in progress. The HAL, the Hero Along, is still going on, and guess what? I got a prize in the mail from the amazing Joanna Spring from Knit Spin Farm. This is for the Hero Along. So those of you who are knitting or have knit a hero, you are in the running to win a hand-sewn project bag by Joanna Spring from Knit Spin Farm. And she, like a little sheepy, and a stitch marker. Now, I'm not going to open this because, come on, how charming is that? I believe this is a medium size bag. I'll just give you a little peek where the packages open a bit. Oh, seriously, hang on. My screen just went dark. So you've got some greens, you've got some reds. It's very Christmassy, but not Christmassy themed, but Christmassy colors. So there will be at least one prize for the hero along, and depending on the amount of people who participate, possibly two. Um, I'll probably throw something in as well. All right, speaking of Joanna Spring, let's go into spinning. So Joanna Spring sent me a mini bat along with that. From She's having people try out her bats to see what they think, give her feedback, because she wants to start selling them. This is the bat she sent me, orange meat purple. And I realized that on my Ravelry, um, on my profile, I list my favorite colors as orange and purple. Did that a long time ago. I'd forgotten about it. So this was orange meat purple, and it's uh, an ounce and three eighths. It has Angel. There we go. Angelina Romney, Sari Silk, Silk Noil, South Down, and Wensleydale. 
do I, I think I have a picture. I took a picture when I got it. Um, what was really amazing about this bat was the thoughtfulness that went into it. It was um, the oranges and purples were sort of separated. However, the orange side of the bat was incorporated with or was mixed with purple Angelina, purple silk noil, um, purple sari silk. And the orange side, no, that was the orange side. The orange side had the purple bits of stuff. The purple side had the orange bits of stuff. So what I did, here's a picture of the bat. One picture of it, doesn't really capture everything. You can see some of the purple Angelina right there. Um, I split it in two. Um, and I, for the first part of it, I mixed, I, I held together a strip of the orange and a strip of the purple. And I went for a barber pulley effect in a single. And then the second part of the bat, I kept on the same bobbin, but I, sp I spun mostly the purple by itself and then the orange by itself. So I have a mixture of barber pole and stripes. And I got 22 ounces of a chunky chain ply. And remember, this was, this was not quite two ounces. And I wanted to chain ply it partially out of laziness, partially because it's the kind of thing I need to keep my skills up with. Um, if I get away from chain plying for a long time and I come back to it and um, I need to up my skills again. So it was time to practice some chain plying. It's one of those use it or lose it kind of things for me. And I adore it. I adore it. Look at that. So Joanna Sprang hit the ball out of the park. And um, I did have a little, look at that. That's some of the silk and oil right there. Super fun. I did have a little of the purple come off on my fingers as I was spinning. Um, however, it, you know, I've knit with yarns that bleed all over me. And this kind of went away right away. And the water was clear when I soaked and thwacked this. So it was like a very vague bit of purple on my finger, which must have to do with the blue and the purple because blue is hard to set, I think. At least that's what I understand from dyers. So I give this a five star. This was super fun to spin and I love the way it came out. Um, and it wasn't an, a very consistent spin for me. I didn't focus, you know, I tend to not focus on doing things consistently when I spin. Um, I did it long draw. But I did put a lot of twist in it because I knew I was going to chain ply it. Um, where was I going with this thought? Yeah, I did put a lot of twist in it. Um, but, you know, interestingly, and it wasn't super consistent, but the chain ply is pretty darn nice, pretty darn consistent. Um, I do think making larger loops when you're chain plying or Navajo plying does help with um, the problem of inconsistencies. I'd be a cute little owl puff. Excellent. Orange meat purple. Yay. All right. So um, again, that was Knit Spin Farm, the amazing Joanna Spring, and I'd do it again. I like that. All right, talking about spinning and talking about bats. Um, I needed a break from all my holiday knitting, so I was walking past my fiber cabinet, and things just attack me sometimes when I walk past my fiber cabinet, usually when I least expect it. Bag of fiber, basket of fiber. Let me show you what I did. I made bats on my drum carter. I have a brother drum carter, which is like bottom of the line drum carter. That's good enough for me. I wanted to, I had a little bit of my Crea alpaca left over, an ounce. And I have some Angora from my friend Jill's bunnies. And I had, what else, some burrito. I thought that would make an amazing mixture. Angora, alpaca, merino. So I carded this lovely, lovely thing up. And oh, it's just nice, really, really nice. Um, let me open her up a little bit. 
just like a soft, soft pillow. Um, I could do more. I, I did not exhaust my supply of those three things. So this will just sit for a while. I think it might want to be fingerless gloves though, eventually. Um, and then I had some fin, fin yarn, and I'm not going to say it was from because uh, the prep on it was, it was a braid of fin top. Uh, I bought it at a festival around here. It was not a fiber festival. It was like a small town Virginia festival. And the prep was not great. It was compressed and a little bit felted, but not, you know, something that can't be overcome with a drum carter. So drum carding is great for opening up fibers that have been compressed. If it looks like a merino that if it stays in your stash too long, it's going to get compressed no matter how good the fiber prep was. Um, if it's under a lot of other stuff, weighing it down, you know, it's going to get a little felty. Anyway, I took the fin, I pulled it apart, and I made two bats. It was a four ounce braid. I don't know if you can see. The colors are just beautiful. It's like a Monet, a Monet vision of loveliness. Mm. So this will be much more fun to spin than that felty, felty um, braid of top. That's four ounces of fin. <laughs> Uh, oh my goodness. Um, the, uh, the alpaca angora bat is, I believe, an ounce and a quarter. Okay, now speaking of felty stuff, I dyed some, I got eight ounces of BFL silk a few years back. Um, just undyed. I think I got it from Three Waters Farms. And I took it and I dyed it purple. And I ruined it. I absolutely ruined the prep. Um, so it's been sitting there in my cabinet for a while, just mocking me. Um, and I just, I said, okay, you, it's time. It's time for you to get drum carded. I love the results. Okay. <sighs> BFL silk. I think it's 80-20. So all is not lost. Oh no, all is not lost. <laughs> There's more. Eight ounces BFL silk. Oh, my lovely purple squishy baby. Um, my thoughts about this. <laughs> so I get fiber out of my mouth. I want to spin this fairly finely, and I want to do a two ply, and I want to do. I have two things in mind, either or. Either I will spin it a two ply and knit a gigantic lace shawl. Or I will spin it a two ply and do that Martina Bem Viajante. Viajante in Spanish, I'm not sure if it's Spanish or Portuguese. If it's Portuguese, it's something else entirely. Viajante. Anyway, that would be crazy, right? Um, I've seen Maria from, or Ma Maria. Malia rhymes with Maria from Knit Spin. Oh, geez, that's not it. Yarn raising, sorry. She knit one, and it's sort of a poncho slash, you know, it's it's a garment that can be worn different ways. It's a scarf, it's a poncho, it's asymmetrical. Um, Steph from Mustache is knitting one right now out of her hand spun, and it's something that I'd love to have, but I'd probably tear my hair out knitting it. Um, but it might be great travel knitting for the summer, and I'm doing a substantial amount of traveling, most likely. Not a sure thing yet. As soon as it's a sure thing, I'll tell you all about it. Um, so that's my drum carding. I gotta get that purple stuff going if I'm gonna spin eight, eight ounces of it finally. Um, but I'm very excited for that. All right, so up and coming, and then we're done talking. Um, the other two niece nephew hats I'm going to make are the fish, dead or alive. I'm not sure if mine's gonna be dead or alive. That will be for my little nephew, my wee guy. He is three. He is adorable. He told me he wanted a knitted hat. So he's knit worthy. He was watching me knit and he's just so stinking cute. He's like, are you gonna knit me something? And I was thinking, do you want something? Because he'd never indicated uh, that he did and he, he wants something. So that's where I got this idea to sort of knit for all of my nephews and my niece. Oh, hang on. So if you haven't seen fish, Dead or Alive, 
I will show it to you. It is a knitty pattern and it looks like a lot of fun to knit. All right, here we go. I'm thinking I'm gonna use the yarn that my kids Kool-Aid dyed for this hat. That'd be fun. All right, so that's, it is a hat where the mouth of the fish is the brim. And then it comes back into the, it's called Fish, Dead, fish Hat Dead or Alive by Thelma Egberts. 6,000 plus projects. So it's easier to see if, if it's on somebody. Let me see if I can get a picture of that. Um, hmm. There's a picture of it on a dude. <laughs> All right. Oh, gosh. See? So it looks like the fish is eating your head. I hope he'll like that. And then the second hat will be for my older nephew, who is very into a game called Minecraft which is, has to do with building things. Video game, excuse me. So I will use the colors of one of the characters in Minecraft. So it's gonna be a, a bright green with some black color work along the brim. And the last up and coming is something that should be coming in the mail. And that is some fiber I got on um, Small Business Saturday. And I bought some fiber from Meduseld, Patricia and Meduseld. She has some new stuff that was just calling to me. She has some Gotland that looks delicious and some Shetland, which I have never spun and I want to try. It's Morit Shetland, M-O-O-R-I-T, which is a color. Um, I believe it's a Gaelic, 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 Gaelic in Ireland, Gaelic in Scotland. It's a Gaelic word for um, a reddish color, a natural reddish. So reddish Morit Scotland, uh, Shetland wool. And yeah, Shetland is Scotland, so it would be Gaelic. And then some Gotland, which I believe is a Scandinavian breed. So I'm excited for those. And that is all I've got for you all today. Wish me luck in my sock knitting. Um, wish, you know, positive thoughts for my index finger not getting split open again. And I hope you all are having a great time. So until next week, you all take care, and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.